Hi everyone, I appreciate you taking some time to watch today's video. In today's video, I want to go over swim bait storage. Everything from soft baits, hard baits, everything in between, kind of how I store my swim baits to keep them in good shape and ready to fish condition. So let's just dive right in and start. Um, so to start, let's go over the soft baits real quick because to me, I think those are actually the simpler way to, uh, you know, it's ready to go after you buy them out of the store. So let's kick it off. Here's a couple, you know, so here's like the working class Zero Citizen, Mega Bass Mag Draft, a couple other citizens, um, the Zal Dangerous, uh, Bass Mafia swim baits. So how I store my soft baits is very simple. I leave them in the original packaging they came from, you know, the manufacturer from or with. So, you know, it gets a little bit bulky, honestly, when you're having to carry this kind of stuff on the boat or even if you're traveling with somebody or fishing off someone else's boat and you gotta kinda try to get all this in there. But in order to kinda preserve the swim baits with their tails and trying to make sure this little tail here doesn't get kinked or misaligned, the best thing that I found is I honestly, you know, keeping them as is for just maintaining their overall body shape. So with the soft baits, I do keep the original packaging. I try my best to sort through them and have everything kind of pieced together before I go to the lake as far as which baits I actually think I'll take, you know, um, with like the Bass Mafia and the Mega Bass Mag Draft, I, I really only throw three colors, so it's not too, too bad as far as like what I actually have to take to the lake. Um, it, it's what, about six packages total, because I... If I'm going out fun fishing, I, pr I predominantly only take the bigger size, so the seven inch or the eight inch respectively, depending upon uh, which manufacturer. Working class zero, you know, I've only got really the two sets of baits, one six and one seven, so kind of limited on that size. But that's kind of my setup for soft baits as far as, you know, on the bigger swim baits. So, when I'm throwing the Alabama rig, I found one of these to be very useful. This is like a little ammo case that you can get, like Plano makes. And this thing is extremely handy for packaging your 2.8 Kitex. As you can kind of see, I've got a handful of Kitex kind of stacked in here. Um, I've also got kind of like, you know, your little Mega Bass Hazendong Shad. A lot of that stuff for the A rig, which honestly, I'll probably keep some of this in the boat as we move throughout the year, but it'll be very, very limited in the amounts that I keep. Just because as we kind of get more into the spring, uh, you know, post spawn, going into the summer, a lot of my fishing transitions into the hard baits, which is kind of where I want to spend the majority of this video talking as far as like how I store my hard bait swim baits. Because um, hard baits, they tend to, they're very, well, they're, they're very challenging to have to store. The biggest reason, the baits are so big. Um, they don't flex, they don't move, you know, unlike the soft baits, or unlike the soft baits, you can't really move them around that much, but like the soft baits, if you damage or you kind of warp, we'll call it, the tail, you could have a glide bait never tracking properly. Um, you know, I've tried to do away with that a lot with my tails that I use because I do use the brush tails. So it gives it a little bit more of a fluid action. But, you know, historically speaking, when I would actually fish like your Arashi and your S Waver, if you got those little, like it's a urethane tail typically, uh, if you get that urethane tail kind of bent or, you know, warped, that bait will not swim right <laughs> it's going to kind of have it will definitely have a predominant way that it wants to swim and you'll notice it very easily in the water because it really won't do its s motion so 
getting a little bit, uh, you know, digressing a little bit there, let's hop back into actually the source of this video and kind of how I store my baits. So I use deep boxes predominantly. Um, these are like your 36, 3700 deeps. As you can kind of tell, I mean, these are the deep ones. And I'll go through each one of these to kind of highlight some of the reasons I like what I do. So this is my Jethro box, the Jethro 6.0. As you can see, I've got it flat packed of different Jethros. I've got different colors and things of that nature, just depending on what kind of water condition I'm gonna encounter. Here in the springtime, you never know if we're gonna have muddy water, if we're gonna have gin clear water. On all of our highland reservoirs around here, you know, we can typically find whichever color water that we wanna fish during the springtime. Now, as we move farther into summer, getting even into, you know, fall, and then back around to winter, it's gonna turn more and more clear, typically. Uh, we get a good rain and we'll sometimes get some stain, but typically we're fishing gin clear. So as you can see, this is kind of how I store my soft bait, or my hard baits, excuse me. This is the 6.0 Jethro, and there's, you know, so the way I measure my Jethro is a 6.0 is tip of the, the tip of the head to the tip of the tail in the resin portion is six inches, and then you have the brush tail that adds in. So real quick, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, so. I have eight Jethro's in here right now, plus the six inch mag drafts. Um, I do keep those in their original packaging, but because the deeps are kind of so deep, I've got three mag drafts in this one, this one compartment. Um, I was doing a tournament um, here recently, and it was just an easy way to store the six inch mag draft. And I, you know, I like to throw the eight inch and I prefer to throw the eight inch, but sometimes you just gotta throw that six inch to get the bite that you need. So those are my six inch, that's my six inch Jethro box. And typically I will run that last row with Jethro's too. I've got a couple of Jethro's in the house right now that I don't actually have in their box cause I was wanting to make a little bit of room for those mag drafts. All right, this is, so that was the Plano, I think it's the 3700 deep with like the water seal to keep it um, from rusting or anything like that. One note I will make on that water seal is, you definitely wanna let your baits air out after they've been in the water for a great period of time because all that water that's on the hooks on the baits, it will condensate inside the box and it will actually cause rust because the water can't escape at that point. So just a real tip there for all of these uh, with the water seal gaskets. This is the D-Box by Daiwa. It's the uh, large deep version. I really like this box. I picked it up um, over the Christmas season when a lot of the stores were running their, um, you know, Christmas sales and so on because I needed another box. But I'm using this one to store my big um, 7.5 Jethro's. So real quick, I've got five Jethro's in here, five 7.5s. And then I also have on, on one of these, I actually have some rats for topwater wakes. Um, so as you can kind of tell, maybe I've got two rows here of Jethro 7.5, Jethro 7.5, topwater rat, topwater wake bait, and then what I'm using these last two compartments down here for is I'm storing some hooks down here. It's actually just a whole lot easier for me to store some hooks in a designated box than it is for me to, you know, go back and forth trying to keep hooks just in the boat if I don't take my designated hook box. Nine times out of 10, I do take that designated hook box with me just because if I bend out hooks, it's a quick way for me to switch out hooks. But I've really been liking the swim bait underground hooks. So they come in a real nice little package. So I kind of just keep it in this little box. And like I said, where I was fishing a tournament here recently, and I was actually fishing on someone else's boat. I wasn't, we weren't fishing on mine. 
um, it was just an easy way to be able to get everything in a in a go bag or a, you know a travel kind of deal. Uh, oh yeah, and you can always put your worms in there too. So I know this is a swim bait video, but everyone uh, I think already knows exactly what this worm is for. This is your rat's tail. So yes, this is a this is a Bass Pro Shop tournament worm. Uh, but I specifically wanted it in methylate, so that's why it's uh, why it's in here. It goes with the uh, the rats, and we're gonna do a designated like wake bait video, and we'll talk about wake baits. But I haven't actually got a good wake bait bite yet going in my area, so hopefully this year we can get a good wake bait bite going, and then we'll do a really in-depth breakdown on some wake baits that I like to throw and we'll talk about the wake but that's an idea as far as how to store all of your stuff if I can get it back in here after I've you know put the box all apart all right so the last box is actually just a repeat it's one of the other Plano 3700 deeps. Water seal again. Uh, this one I'm using more so for my crank downs. I've got a couple of prototypes in here I'm playing with to see how I like those. But, you know, right now this is just kind of a, overall, it's just an extra box so that I've got something in the event I need it. Uh, I typically run about three, maybe four of the deep boxes. So, and, and here's another thing, because I'm going to show you my bulk storage, too. Because these are what I would call my fishing boxes. These are the boxes that I actually take to the lake with me very regularly. Um, rare, you know, I will always have a designated Jethro 6.0 box. That box, that's its sole purpose, is to carry the 6.0. I'll always have a 7.5. So... And then I have the one box that I kind of float. Sometimes I'll carry HUDs in there too. Um, if it's during the winter time, I'll put HUDs in that box because you can store your 30, uh, in that 3,700 deep, you can also store the Huddleston Deluxe, the eight inch, the 68 both, and it won't get the tails damaged. It, it manages to hold them up pretty good. So I've not had any issues there and I've really enjoyed using that. But, so for my bulk storage, because as you can guess, as a swim bait builder, you know, hard swim bait builder, I have to find ways to kind of keep track and keep my baits stored safely, securely, without having to worry about them so much, uh, in the sense of, you know, keeping them out of the house to where, you know, you're not stepping on them everywhere. So the best one that I have found, and I found this at Bass Pro Shops, this is a Plano ammo case. It's a big one and it's very deep. It is, when I pick that up and I'll try to do a couple of snapshots of the inside of it so you'll see how it's kind of stacked, but you're able to hang the baits from the nose down going into the box. Easiest way I found to hang or to store some of the giant baits. When they're that large, you know, they're hard to store. You don't throw them year round. Those are not your consistent go-to baits. Well, at least not in my area. I have about two months out of the year that I can throw like the big Omer and actually feel like I've got confidence in it. It's an 11 inch bait. We have trout in our lakes, but you know, if the trout are not up, things like that, it's all about fishing confidence. And for me, I just end up having more confidence fishing a Jethro the remainder of the year. I can put a Jethro on 12 months out of the year and feel confident that I could get a bite. Those baits, it's gonna be more like I'm trophy hunting and I'm looking specifically for one bite probably about two months out of the year. Now, that said, everyone in the different areas of the country, whether you be in California, Texas, you know, you've got some gizzard shad that's definitely in that 10 to 12 inch plus range. You've got some trout that, because your lakes might be shallower than mine, uh, my lakes can go anywhere, you know, 100 
maybe 200 feet in certain areas near the dam. So very, very deep reservoirs. The trout typically stay very, very low, except for a few months out of the year. Typically those being, you know, the winter months. But still, you've got to try to be able to pull a bass out of 30, 40 foot of water to come up and hit this big glide bait. They will do it. It's just, you have to have the patience and time knowing that you're gonna sink into one bait really and looking for one fish to be able to throw that bait. So that's why I typically store those baits in a different area than I do with like the Jethro's. So I have my go boxes or fishing boxes that primarily stay ready to go. All I've got to do is grab those boxes, grab the rod and head to the lake versus actually have to sort through the, the big Plano ammo case to dig through all of those big baits. But this is my swim bait storage. This is kind of how I do it. Um, you know, definitely with the soft baits, I'll typically have like a little tote or something like that that I can kind of keep them all together in. So the, uh, you know, my bait locker in the in the boat doesn't get too, too, too obscene trying to sort through everything and find out what I'm looking for. But that's primarily how I store mine. Um, you know, it, it's a lot of it just comes down to personal preference. And I'd love for everyone down in the comments to tell me how you're storing your baits and how do you go to the lake fishing or go to the riverbank fishing. What is your go-to method as far as how you store your big swim baits? Because they are so large, you know, they're expensive too. Um, I mean, the hard baits can get very, very expensive. And then like your mag drafts, they just went up in price. So um, trying to store everything, and I've just cast off a mag draft, so I've got to replace an eight inch mag draft. Um, but we'll, we'll see how that goes. So. I'm, I'm gonna be having to, to look into that, but digressing once again. So put down in the comments what your preferred methods of storing your big baits are. Really appreciate hearing from you. I really appreciate knowing what you do kind of differently. I hope this information helps. I hope it finds you well. Um, I hope everyone had a wonderful Easter weekend, you know, celebrating uh, the resurrection. So. I really appreciate everyone taking some time to watch today's video. I really, truly appreciate it. Thank you so much. Please, if you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and hit that little subscribe button down below in the notification bell that keeps you up to date on when any new videos come out. Uh, my video schedule is the first and third Monday of each month. I do my best to get those videos out at 6.45 p.m. Eastern Standard. Um, here, you know, March, I was successful in getting a bonus video out to be able to do every single Monday in the month of March. Uh, very happy that I've been able to do that and Lord willing and everything works out. We're going to try to continue that weekly, you know, progression of videos. I'll try to get that out. Uh, I don't want to commit to it yet just because I want to make sure that I can get it out and actually give you good content. I don't want to just get out content just so that you have a video out there that I, I don't, you know, that I myself am not proud of. So I want you to have good content, not just some video to watch. But I really appreciate everyone's time. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.